Hello everyone, my name is Yu Chong. I'm a Singaporean artist. My works range from drawing small sketches to painting large murals on the streets. If you have visited the National Museum of Singapore in recent years, you may have seen an animation of seven of my murals. The title of the installation is called Moving Memories. It features old scenes of Singapore, which you may have seen or experienced when growing up. You may like to check the link on the National Museum of Singapore's website for a digital version of the installation. This is the third video of a series of three videos where I will bring us through some of these old scenes that inspired my mural paintings. I'll also share some of the colouring techniques using dry colours, such as crayons, colour pencils and magic pens to get you started to create your own artworks. In this episode, I'll be talking about provision shops in Singapore, which has inspired my mural Provision Shop, painted in 2015. I'll also show you how to colour this sketch of the provision shop using magic pens. You can download this sketch from the National Museum of Singapore's webpage. In old Chinatown where I used to grow up, there were many provision shops like this one. There were many types of goods packed inside the shop in gunny sacks, shelves, jars, crates, or even hung on bamboo sticks from the ceilings and walls. The shop was often dark and lit just by a small light bulb or fluorescent tube. Let's take a closer look at what they sell in the shop. Ah, I can smell the salted fish and the wax duck, the lap cheong, the coconut and the pandan leaves, and the chili and ikan bilis. I can see eggs, century eggs and salted eggs. What else can you see? The earlier provision shops often relied on simple tools to run their business. Look at this shop. For example, I can see the Milo tin being used to collect cash. That's the Milo tin. And the weighing skill was the old style using weights to weigh dry goods. Like this. Can you see the abacus on the table used to count money? Like this. Can you see the lady grating coconut with the machine? Coconut was a common ingredient used in many multi-ethnic dishes, including putumayam and the laksa. The museum has another type of tool used to remove the coconut flesh from the shell. Do you know how to use it? If you look closely, you can see the men cutting ice in the provision shop. Ice was sold in the provision shops in the 1950s and 60s, when I was living in Chinatown in the 1970s. I remember my mom asked me to go to the provision shop or the coffee shop to buy ice because we didn't have a fridge at home. Over the years, there were fewer provision shops as more mini marts and supermarkets emerged. People were attracted to the modernity, the aircon, the wider variety of goods and discounts. There are seven scenes in the Moving Memories installation and I've sketched all of them. Today, we'll be colouring this provision shop scene. You can download this sketch from the National Museum of Singapore's webpage. We'll be using magic pens to colour this sketch. As I colour, I will also be sharing with you various techniques using magic pens. So for a change, I'm going to use a slightly different technique from the earlier two scenes. I'm not going to mimic realism, but I'm going to make this shop whimsical, technic colour, full of wild colours. So I'll be using colours like bright yellow, bright pink, green to make this whole picture like a pop-up art. I can colour, say, the salted fish in green instead of grey. Complementary colours right, tend to be attractive. For example, if I use green or turquoise on the scale of the fish, I can use a complementary colour like pink or red. Now this fish looks like a Ranakan fish and the tail yellow. 
But to, to really make this like pop art, you have to imagine the colors must be uh, well combined and well spread. So I will not try to like uh, paint everything yellow in one corner, everything red in one corner, but I want to spread the various colors. The other technique I want to show you is using magic pens or highlighters. You can cover surfaces by drawing shapes and patterns to fill the area without colouring the whole place. Now, for example, this signboard, I'm going to draw patterns on the words as well as the background. So let me use red dots. See? If I put the dots closer together and later when you step back, you actually are feeling the area. And now I can even add other colors over the red. Say green, which is another complementary color. Now you see the color red and green being mixed, and when you step back, it's actually brown. Now, as it moves to the center of the signboard, now I want it to look brighter. So I'm going to change to yellow and this time instead of using dots, I can draw strokes, horizontal strokes, vertical strokes, diagonal strokes to make a pattern over it. And I can even cross over to where the dots are. See, this is really interesting. And I can switch to another color now so that it looks like it's graded. Now, for the words, in order to make the words pop up, I will have to use a more contrasting color because the background is now very light. Look at these sacks of rice and ikan bilis. I principally try to retain the, the rice sacks as rice sacks, but I have added a twist to it. I have put uh, different checker patterns on it so it's, it's interesting because you have modern patterns but you have it on traditional items. Of course the chilli I retain it as red. Uh, the green beans I retain it as green. The rice is still rice. So you, you can see it's really very interesting. It's really colourful, really looks like pop-up. Now I have used various strokes to fill surfaces. For example, you can see this one, I'm just doing curls. Whereas this one, I'm using crisscross. Crisscross mixed with dots, just like I did in the signboard. And the use of colors, I try to spread pink, green everywhere so that it's not clustered together and it kind of forms a picture. Things can still pop up. The trick is contrast. When you have a dark background and a very colorful object in front of you, and the background is not just black in this case, right? I make it so whimsical that you feel like it is a wonderland. You want to go into this wonderland provision shop. I have applied a kind of a very colorful techniques to make black. I don't use black or just dark brown one color. See, I circle over the green with uh, red, with yellow, with blue. The, enjoy the process. It's, it's so fun to just use different colors. So there is no restrictions in what colors you can use for any type of objects. Now I'm completing the floor with some shadows and a very colourful floor. I really enjoy this colouring because I'm free to use any colours. I'm not restricted to use the real colour for each object. And that opens up so much possibilities. It's done! I really enjoy colouring this sketch because I get to use so many colours. It's so fun and whimsical.
I hope you have enjoyed this video and you will try these colouring techniques at home. This is the last video of the series. We have coloured using crayons, colour pencils and magic pens. Keep practising these techniques and don't forget to share pictures with us. We would love to see them. You may tag us on social media or send us an email. I hope to see you all again. Thank you and bye!